Hey you guys, I'm going to be showing you guys how to build a computer. Well, before we get into it, let me do a brief introduction. My name is Juan and I attend Valley View High School in Moreno Valley, California. And this is my senior project. You may be wondering what is a senior project. Well, in my high school, all seniors are required to do some type of project that reaches out to the community. It could be whatever you want, as long as it is legal and it is school appropriate according to them and i chose to build a computer and there's a lot of stuff that we do before we actually do the actual project and i'm not going to get into that right now so basically if i don't do this project i don't graduate and that goes for everyone that attends my high school and is a senior well let's get started before anything i would like to say that building a computer is very 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 easy if you cannot build a computer, you basically fail at life. Like honestly, it's very easy. You just plug in a few parts, screw in a few bolts, insert some software, and you're you're done. That's it. Like it's not that hard. Like it does not take a genius. And it's basically plug and play. And it's not that hard. One of the benefits from building your own computer is that you save a lot of money. No matter what type of user you are, you, you will always end up saving a lot of money. Whether it be like a few hundred dollars or a few thousand dollars. You could build a computer for $250 for basic usage and it'll be pretty fast. For building this particular computer, I spent about $2,000. A lot of people might say that's a lot of money, but really it, I got what I pay for and I'm going to use this computer for college and I'm, there's a few upgrades I still want to do, but yeah. Also, I've been saving my money for quite some time. Like around my junior year, I started saving for my senior project. So I, I didn't just have this money handed to me. I actually earned it. One of the first things you should do is figure out what are you going to use the computer for and what type of user are you. Are you just a simple user that uses it for Microsoft Word and some YouTube or something? Or do you play a lot of video games? Or do you just watch movies? Depending on what type of user you are, you need to figure that out and then you need to build a budget around that. And yeah, the more money you spend, the more you get. That, that almost applies to everything. Building a computer should only take about a few hours at most. Never days unless you're doing something very, very crazy. Well, good luck with that. Well, it took me a few hours throughout a week because I was only giving two to three hours per day to work on my computer and I had to do it on campus because my mentor was not allowed to let me borrow the camera off campus and I had to use his tripod too. And I thank him for that. I wish I could have done it in HD, but hey, what can you do? And um it took me longer because i had to record at the same time and that's about it oh yeah this mo this video is to be moving pretty fast so um, pause when you need to go back but yeah this should teach you how to build a computer one of the first things that you need is a case but the case is optional and one of the other things that you're gonna need is a hard drive After the hard drive, you're going to need a CPU cooler. It could be a fan or you could go look at cooling like I did. You need some screws, risers, and all that. You need some RAM. And you're going to need an Intel processor or AMD, your choice, depending on your chipset. You're going to need a um, motherboard, a graphics card, and a power supply unit. I chose Ultra X4, 1200 watt power supply. And don't forget the screwdriver. First thing first, to start with stripping the case. I chose the Thermaltake Full Armor Plus. It's a full tower. It's really big. You can fit a lot of things. Extra hard drives, ex extra DVD drives, um, fans. Keep it nice and cool. And the areas I'm about to point to, that's what needs to be unscrewed. So we can take out the motherboard tray, which is really convenient when you, when you want to upgrade certain things. And yeah. And this case, the reason I like this because you don't only really, it's really tool is like you you might need a screwdriver now and then, but yeah. And those cables that you see there, that's for the case. Like it's the power button, the reset button, the audio jacks, the eSATA um, plug in, and I believe there's a firewire. I'm not sure. I'm I don't remember. Yeah. Well, let's take that out. Let's keep moving forward. And there we go. Alright, the areas I'm about to point to once I move the tray. There you go. It's the risers you need to put the motherboard on to get mounted on and fit it to the case. Next, we're going to prepare the CPU cooler. 
and you get a, need to get the right booklet for your chipset mine's a 1366 and that's just be demonstrating what's going to happen to the radiator we're going to put two fans one to push in air one to pull out air the push pull method all right we're going to need to install this little bracket on the back of the motherboard before we um mount the motherboard onto the chassis and that's me showing how it's gonna end up all right pull the two stickers on you stick it on there so once you put it on the back of the motherboard you don't have to keep your hand on it so you can have more free ha hands i guess yeah all right you mount it on make sure it's aligned with the holes perfectly it should align firmly there it's nice and firm now let's turn around and let's prepare the front bracket that's what it is you just push in this few tools provided by them sorry for my vocabulary on screws and all that <laughs> yeah okay before we install the front bracket onto the motherboard we need to install the cpu uh, i made the mistake of doing this before the other okay I'm still working on it right there and I finally complete the front bracket it just took a few screws I had to put it in it's pretty small to do all right when you're installing the CPU make sure you're very very careful because if you bend the chip or get the CPU dirty from the back um, a lot of things could go wrong I don't know where to start um, just make sure it's nice and firm make sure it's aligned perfectly on the CPU only goes in one way so do not force something in and there we go now we install the front bracket like I said before and yeah make sure when you're screwing it in it's not too tight because you need to have a little bit loose so we can install the CPU cooler in it before we tighten uh, the bracket to it and yeah stick a few screws put in just tightening it a little bit not too tight though oh yeah I almost forgot the CPU is basically the brain of the computer you need it it's essential it's not optional right here I made the mistake of mounting the fan to the radiator before putting it onto the the motherboard tray so just ignore this right now next you need to mount the motherboard onto the motherboard tray and make sure it is perfectly aligned along with the risers once you are screwing on the screws to the motherboard make sure there is a non-conductive washer such as paper washers between the screw and the motherboard itself if not this will cause your motherboard to be fried and all your components will be useless and you just wasted a lot of money before you mount the radiator to the motherboard tray make sure you plug in the 8 pin cpu power module cable to the appropriate slot the 8 pin slot should look like something like the diagram shown. If you do not, you will not be able to plug in the power module to the slot. As I was mounting on the radiator to the motherboard tray, I made the mistake of not aligning it properly when it should have been rotated one more time clockwise. A diagram will be shown in a few seconds of how it was supposed to look. Next, you will need to properly secure the CPU cooling plate onto the front bracket. Note there is a pre-applied thermal paste on the water block. If you would like to use your own thermal paste, that would be perfectly fine. Personally, I would recommend Tunic TX4 thermal paste. Without high quality thermal paste, having an expensive CPU cooler would be useless. Next, we will install the RAM onto the motherboard. For those of you that do not know what RAM is or what it stands for, well, it is an abbreviation for random access memory. It is what makes your computer fast and the more RAM you have, the better. Now I won't lag on Facebook with my 24 gigs of RAM. 
The next step is to install the graphics card. Make sure it is nice and tight with a screwdriver. Make sure it goes on the PCI Express 16 slot. The graphics card is what allows you to see images on your monitor. Without one on your computer, will not display anything unless you, your motherboard has an integrated graphics processor. The next step I will be doing is, is installing the capture card that I have. This is completely optional and you do not need one. This particular capture card allows me to record from HDMI devices such as, such as an Xbox 360 and mix those generic Call of Duty montages. This was supposed to go on the PCI Express 1 slot but it is covered by my graphics card and I need to put in a different PCI Express slot. Next you will need to install the power supply. The power supply is what powers the whole system and depending on the components that you have, you may need a bigger power supply. In the video, I forgot to install the silicone vibration damper which absor absorbs vibration and makes less noise. I ended up installing it later on off, off camera. I had to cut the certain piece off the case with a Dremel because my radiator was not sliding into the chassis when I tried to slide the motherboard tray back into the chassis. This sent me back a day and it's one of those small things that set you back that I stated before. Here's how the radiator, radiator was supposed to be. Next, we need to plug in a 24 pin power module from the power supply into the motherboard itself. This is the cable that powers the motherboard. I grabbed the protected sleeve and slid it back as far as I could to give it a cleaner look. My cable management looks bad when I recorded this, but I organized it all off, off camera. The recording was just there for, as a demonstration. Next, we need to plug in the 8-pin power module and the 6-pin power module from the graphics card to the power supply. This is used to power the graphics card itself. Like I said before, don't mind the cable management. Next, we need to plug in the ATX power module from the power supply to the hard drive, so this may power the hard drive itself. Next, we get the other ATX cable and plug it into the DVD drive, so I may power the DVD drive and then plug that into the power supply itself. Next, I will plug in a 4-pin power module from the power supply to the fans itself. This will power all the fans in the system, the computer itself, and that is me plug plugging it in. Next, we will connect the SATA cable into the SATA 3.0 slot on the motherboard and then into the hard drive. This will allow the motherboard to read the hard drive and it is where you store all your files and media files. I also connected another SATA cable from the from the case itself into the SATA 2.0 slot on the motherboard. I am also connecting the SATA cable from the DVD ROM drive into the motherboard itself and this will allow me to install an operating system and whatnot. Those red pins that you just saw are the USB headers and I connected both of them and that will allow me to use the USB ports on my case. Next I will be connecting the high definition audio jacks from the case itself into the headers for it. Next, I'll be connecting the FireWire header, so I may, I may use the FireWire on my case, and all these locations are located on your diagram, for your, which comes with your motherboard. The diagram that was just shown is the diagram for where you need to connect all the headers for your case. The headers being the cables for your power button, reset button, hard drive, LED indicator, and the power LED indicator for your case. Note that the triangle on the cable equals positive and the other side equals negative. After you connected these cables, you are finally done and you've built your first computer. C congratulations. Now you just put everything back together, turn it on, go into the BIOS and assign the DVD ROM drive as the primary boot device and install the operating system. And once you install it, install all the software that you wish and go back into the BIOS and make the hard drive the primary boot device and you, you are not finished. Yay. On a side note, I want to replace the blue LED fans with green ones and add three extra fans in there that glow green LEDs. And if this taught you anything, please subscribe, rate, comment, and if you can, donate money to my PayPal account so I may use the money for college next year. And I would like to thank all the people that was involved in the making of this computer. 
Thank you.